well after a day break from responding to this video and just dealing with the you know militant atheist label I decided I'll come back to this and deal with the next bit. This may be the last video or maybe there's something more I need to add later. I'm not sure yet. But I'm gonna deal with some of your claims about what science can or cannot discover in particular. Like here at one minute and forty one seconds you discuss the orthodoxy is a set of beliefs mere absurd that is accepted to the faith community. The atheist believes that everything can be explained as an act of unintentional, undirected, purposeless evolution. They hold that these beliefs so strongly that even when faced with what seems like soma rational belief, not sure what soma means there, they have to dismiss it out of hand like the fox and the grape. Cognitive dissonance. Dawkins wrote, Biology is the study of complicated things that have the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. And, <clears throat> of course, the first objection here, and I'm pretty sure you've heard it to death, is this is science. This is not atheism. Yes, atheists um, believe this for the most part, but not, there are some that believe other things, but for the most part, atheists believe this, but so do many theists and Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Jews and whatnot accept this very same thing. So this is not by nature an atheist orthodoxy or anything of the sort. This is not a requirement for atheists. You know, the deal here is that we have explanations for evolution. We have the evidence for it. All arguments against evolution have been shown to be false. You may have things that you think are rational, but for the most part, most of these arguments fail to understand what actual science says or shows. And your lack of understanding of science and biology is not indignative of, sci of biology and evolution. And this is a problem. As I go went back to my previous video, scientists reject intelligent design because it fails, and they have a better explanation that works. You know, we see things in nature that are not perfectly designed, as much as we see things that are designed, or at least appear to be. And this is through the act of evolution. Things that aren't, that fail, or don't work as well, or go backwards don't get passed on for the most part. The eye, for instance. <coughs> the eye is a continual progression forwards. Anything that made the eye worse would we, we did out eventually. The only times you see the eye disappearing is where the eye is a hindrance, like for fish and insects and whatnot that live underground, where we don't need the eye. Be and this is exact what we would expect. You know, we don't need God to create the eye. You may have rational and good explanations for how the eye got there by God, but this doesn't say it whether or not it's actually true. Or whether or not it's actually reasonable provided the actual evidence. We have explanations for everything biology or work close to it when it comes to evolution. We have the fossils. We have everything that fits perfectly with evolution. And a lot of things that don't really fit perfectly with with um, intelligent design. The giraffe nerve. The um, way certain animals eat plants that are completely backwards, like the rabbit is one of the most absurd ideas in how to eat plant matter. It has to eat its own shit just so that it can get the food material it requires. Because it digests everything at the very end of its digestive tract and then has, um, where it barely gets absor absorbed. You have cows and have to do it multiple times. You have the human eye, 
which has the nerve in the wrong place compared to squid and other animals that actually have it, you know, other non mam mam animals on the ground and whatnot that have the eye backwards and actually works better. And among other things, are you really going to tell me that these things are perfect examples of design? You know, God could have done it from the beginning, but all the evidence points to evolution doing it and makes more sense is evolution doing it. And this is just what we've got. You go on to say that according to theists, humans are designed just like jet engines and ethesium machines and so on. And you know, if you have, you have an answer. Yes, that's correct. But that doesn't mean it's correct. Your answer is true. Just because you can answer something does not me therefore mean you've got the correct answer. And that applies to evolution or God. Your answering this question, no matter how much you think it answers better, doesn't necessarily make it true. Where is the evidence? What does it lead towards? What is the actual facts? And what we see, as I've said earlier, is that these is that human beings and other animals show the handiwork of evolution. We have the junk DNA. We have the vestigial organs. We have all sorts of things that sort of point towards evolution, along with the DNA linking up, showing similarities and differences lining up, including things that have no point in the human body lining up. And this is the whole thing we're talking about. You keep saying that, you know, God answers the question. Prove to me that the answer is correct. Don't just say God answers the question best. Show me that he actually answers it. Show me that it's correct and true that he answers these questions. You know, and you know, a lot of people work in life ha despite having some really weird ideas. Look at people who believe in UFOs. Look at people who believe in the reptilian conspiracy. Outside of the things it affects, they have perfectly normal lives. And are you going to say that they're perfectly, that their ideas are perfectly natural and whatnot? You believe what you believe. You've been taught it your entire life. You haven't really been shown, or at least taken the time to look at all the evidence that points away from what you're saying. And this is the issue. People have cognitive dissonance. You even mentioned it before. And yet now you're saying it wouldn't apply to you. You look at everything else rationally in your life. But when it comes to this thing called God, you have a priori need for him to be correct. So you, you reject anything that proves other words. Now you could say that about atheists and myself. But I've actually looked at the evidence. I haven't seen any evidence that is nothing more than I need God to be true, therefore he must be true. You know, with evolution and science, we can repeat, we can show and look, okay, this leads us to believe that evolution is correct. Where can you do this with God? Where is the evidence that leads towards God? Other than fallacies and, uh, and ontological arguments and other things that are basically just, I need God to be true, therefore he must be true. I really need for you to, you know, show us we're wrong. And you hear saying that, you know, we have to show that you're wrong, you know, we have to show that we're correct and you're wrong. Well, no, you have to prove that God is true. You need to exp show that God is true for your argument to even be correct. We can show that evolution happens. We can show that the world exists. Where can you show that God exists? Where can you show that your arguments have any validity? And again, as I'll keep harping on, let's say God exists. Let's say God did interfere and create some things in the universe. What point can you point to? What evidence do you have that God was required for evolution to work? 
What evidence do you have that God was required for the universe to be created? Show me those things. Don't just say God did those things. Show me that you're right. Because if you're not right, you're wasting our time looking on a red herring, completely pointless argument. You know, if God used evolution, then saying God didn't, you know, God created the abiogenesis and let evolution go on its own, then saying that God used, created, is sitting there making every little fiddle point with evolution is wasting our time and we're not getting the information that's correct. You have to show us that your reasons and your ideas are correct and have more validity than what we already got the evidence for. You can't just say your God answers the questions better. You have to show that he A, answers the questions better and B, actually answers them. And this is what you need to do. This is what all theists that want to sit there and claim that God did X have to do. They have to show that there is a reason for it when we got evidence to the contrary. Your job is a burden and a proof claiming God exists to show us that he exists and that he did these things.